Hi everybody, this is Ryan George from The Thing You're Currently Watching. This is a revisit of the pitch beating for Super Mario Bros that I made several years ago. So I hope you enjoy that and then stick around after because I'll talk about it and what, you know, things. While you're doing that, I'm going to draw a mushroom. So, you have a movie for me? Yes sir, I do. I was thinking we could make a movie based on the most popular video game franchise out there. Oh, the Super Mario Brothers? That's not how it's pronounced. It might be. It's not. So anyway, I thought since this thing already has a bunch of fans, they'd all come see a movie if we made one. Wow, so tell me about this thing. How does it all start? Well, 65 million years ago, there were dinosaurs, right? Oh, okay, you're starting way back, okay. I sure am, sir. So in this movie, we're gonna be like, hey, what if the meteor that killed all the dinosaurs also created a parallel dimension where it didn't? Oh, sounds smart and sciencey. And so in that other dimension, dinosaurs have evolved over the course of 65 million years. Wow, what did they evolve into? Pretty much into humans, but with different clothes. Oh, you're saying that over a long enough period of time, literally everything evolves into a human being, that's right. Is that, does that, is that scientific at all? Well, the word evolution is used in science, so yeah, for sure. Oh, well, okay then, carry on. So anyway, in modern-day Brooklyn, we're gonna meet Mario and Luigi. Oh, man, is he gonna introduce himself, like, in the game? It's a me! No, cause see, this version's from Brooklyn, so he's gonna be more like, what are you talking about? Get out of here! So he's not gonna say, it's a me? He's not, but he is gonna say, I'm gonna break every bone in their bodies, and then I'm gonna kill them. Oh, my God. Yeah, that is a real thing that Mario's says in this movie. Well, it does have the potential to be as catchy as It's a Me. Anyway, so Mario and Luigi live together and they have a plumbing business, right? Oh yeah, they're plumbers in the game, huh? I kind of forgot about that. Yeah, we're just gonna go all in on the plumbing. It's gonna be one of the main things they talk about. Oh, going all in on plumbing is tight. It really is. And so we're gonna learn that Mario actually kind of raised Luigi, because Luigi's parents weren't around. Wait, what, what, what happened to his parents? I don't know. And so we're saying that the Super Mario brothers are not, they're not brothers? I guess so, but also we're gonna reveal that their last name is Mario. Their names are Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. That's what we're going with. Well, okay then. So we're gonna meet this girl, Daisy, who's being stalked by these two bad guys, Iggy and Spike, and we're gonna learn that they're from the bad dimension. That can't be good. And so Daisy develops like a romantic thing with Luigi, but then she gets kidnapped through this portal to Dino Hatton. Dino Hatton? Yeah, it's like Manhattan, but in the Dino dimension. Oh, so it's Dino Hatton instead of Manhattan? That's right, because I assume that the man in Manhattan is to spend specify what species lives there. You know, I actually read that it's derived from a Native American language and it means island of many hills. Now, I'm pretty sure it's the word man with Hatton slapped on the end. Hatton meaning... I don't know. For some reason, I'm convinced. So it's basically New York down there also, like there's a Statue of Liberty. So history unfolded exactly the same, like Dino France gave a gift to Dino US? Yeah, sure, I don't care. So anyway, Mario and Luigi go into this portal too. And all they have to work off of is this little rock necklace that they got off a Daisy when she was going through. Wow, 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 wow. So they end up in this weird city and it's ruled by President Koopa. Kind of like King Koopa, like Bowser. Yeah, exactly like Bowser, except, you know, not like Bowser at all. Oh, okay. And Koopa's whole thing is that he wants that little rock necklace I mentioned. Because that's a little piece of the meteorite and for some reason that'll merge our dimensions together. Why does he want that? Because he wants to live in our dimension. Can he just you know, go through the portal thing. But it wasn't open till now. But it's open now. It is, yeah. He sent his henchmen through it. But Koopa's not gonna go through. That's right. Why? Because that works. Also, Koopa really wants to turn us all into monkeys. What? Yeah, he has like this de-evolver machine he wants to use on us. What are, you, what are you talking about? It's this thing he uses to de-evolve people. Like, you know, Toad? Oh, Toad, the cute little mushroom guy. Exactly, yeah. Except in this movie, he's like a, you know, 40-year-old street musician. What? Why? Well, that's actually a really good question. I don't, I have no idea. Oh, okay. Yeah, so anyway, Koopa puts this toad guy into the machine and it turns him into a Goomba. Oh, Goombas like the little angry mushrooms with the big heads from the games? Yeah, exactly like that, except not like that at all. Oh, what do you mean? See, these Goombas have like tiny lizard heads and gigantic bodies. So are there any mushrooms in this movie? I feel like there were a lot of those in the games. Oh, well, there's actually gonna be this fungus everywhere that's actually Daisy's father and it wants to help, but it can't talk because it's fungus and it used to be king. Okay, okay, I mean, that sounds you know, completely insane. A big old fungus all over the place and it wants to help. And that's the only mushroom? Well, I mean, unless you want to count the mushrooms I ate while coming up with this stuff. Oh, did you, while you were writing, take some 
Magic mushrooms. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. They were just, they were just portobello mushrooms. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. You thought, you thought that I took. Yeah, no, I thought that maybe. I thought that. Yeah, no, no, I did. I didn't. Okay, yeah, no, okay, okay. Yeah, no, that would have completely messed with my acid trip. Oh, my God. So, anyway, Mario and Luigi are gonna run around this city trying to escape the Goombas and trying to get this necklace back. Wait, what happened to the necklace? This big angry woman, Big Bertha, stole it. Big Bertha? Yeah, she's kind of a reference to that big red fish from Super Mario. I don't know. I don't care. Well, is it gonna be hard? for them to get it back from her? Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, Mario dances with her at a nightclub and shoves his face into her cleavage, and he manages to get it back. Very child-appropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's Koopa up to this whole time? Oh, well, he's gonna try to get intimate with Daisy. Oh, no. Yeah, he's gonna tell her, you know what they say about little girls, don't you? They never forget the first time they were kissed by a lizard. I am just so, so very horrified. And so eventually, Mario's gonna go save his girlfriend. Wait, what? His girlfriend? Princess Peach? No, no, just some girl from Brooklyn. It turns out she was kidnapped too. Okay, I mean, okay. And then Luigi is gonna save Daisy, and they're gonna shoot Koopa with a de-evolver gun, which turns him into a dinosaur, and then into like a slimy goo. Into slimy goo? Yeah, because maybe dinosaurs were slime before they were dinosaurs. I don't, I don't care. Well, okay then. And so then Mario and Luigi go back home, and Daisy stays behind. How come? Because she wants to reconnect with her dad. He's not a fungus anymore. He's human. How did that happen? I don't know. It just happened when they killed President Koopa. How? Oh my god, I don't care. I do not, I, I don't care. Okay, all right. And so then at the end, Daisy's gonna bust into their apartment and be like, I need your help, come on, let's go. What? Well, we're probably gonna make a sequel. I mean, we don't even know if people are gonna like a movie based on a video game. Well, these video game franchises have built-in audiences. We have to keep trying, even if it doesn't work on this one. I just feel like maybe people will realize that it's a cash grab. Let's just, let's just try it out. Let's give it a shot. Okay. For a few decades. What? The mushroom turned out a lot more phallic than I intended, and I'm not trying to get demonetized. So, for some reason, I don't know why, it's always been important to me to make sure that the computer in the background of the pitch meetings matches the time of, you know, when the pitch would have happened. Never mind that these two vampires are the same age no matter what decade they're in. I can't have anachronistic background elements that would, this whole thing would fall apart. What? What a, what a movie. I had never seen this movie before making this pitch meeting. I had heard about how crazy it was, maybe seen a couple of clips. I didn't even play a ton of Nintendo growing up. I was a PS1 child. I was a Spyro child. If anything, more than anything, I was an NHL 2000 child. My parents would walk around the house and multiple times a day hear EA Sports. It's in the game. So I didn't have any nostalgia goggles or anything going into watching this. I was just a grown man in 2020 watching something that I can only assume drugs were involved in making this. How could they not have been? This movie was insane. Bob Hoskins signed on without even knowing that it was based on a video game. They cast the main actor without telling him that it was based on a video game. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. I apologize if my audio suddenly gets weird. My cat, I have one of those cats that gives hugs. We don't know how it happened, but it's the cutest thing in the world, but it also makes him drool excessively for some reason. So it's, it's kind of a, a give and take in terms of cuteness. Now, to be fair to Super Mario Bros, this was the first video game ever turned into a movie, so there was no roadmap for what they were doing. And I'm sure a lot of lessons were learned while making this one. Like, hey, maybe make it resemble the game a little more? This movie felt like someone shook their five-year-old awake in the middle of the night and was like, hey, describe Super Mario Bros to me. And the kid was like, mushrooms and a m dinosaur. I can't imagine the disappointment and confusion of like actual Mario fans back when this came out. If you were one of those people, I would love to know how you felt in the comment section. Getting all jazzed up to see this on the big screen and then it just has the vaguest connections to the game. Just paper thin, weirdly modified elements. It's like if you really love sesame seed bagels and you go to a restaurant that say they're serving sesame seed bagels and then they just give you like a green smoothie with sesame seeds sprinkled on top. And they're like, hey, it's that thing you liked. We're selling it to you. And you're like, that's not at all. Well, kind of, I get that. Yeah, you got the seeds. I found a little tidbit that just clicked rewatching this pitch meeting. That's freaking Fisher Stevens. He's in Succession. Are you watching Succession? It's very good. Here's a little self-criticism note I would like to give myself on this pitch meeting. 
be better. But seriously, and more specifically, this part right here, I would cut now. You know, I actually read that it's derived from a Native American language and it means island of many hills. Now, I'm pretty sure it's the word man with Hatton slapped on the end. Hatton meaning... I don't know. For some reason, I'm convinced. I feel like that's just an extra 10 seconds of a joke that had already hit its highest point, so it's I could have just cut that. All that 10 seconds does is show that I had Googled what Manhattan actually means, but the viewer already knows that the man in Manhattan isn't there because men live there, and I already made the joke, so it's like, it's not a deal breaker, it's not awful, it's just unnecessary, and I would cut that. I would just trim that fat. It was just a reiteration of the joke in a by less funny way. Question time, with probably clearer audio now. Sorry about my cat, Eddie Redmayne. So very kind words, and then maybe a kind of depressing meta question, but has doing pitch meetings adjusted your enjoyment of movies as a whole? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely affected my movie-going experience because I don't have a lot of time to go see movies, so when I'm seeing a movie, it's usually because I'm gonna try to make a pitch meeting about it. But I do still watch movies, I do still enjoy movies, but I certainly do see myself, you know, looking for plot inconsistencies. I kind of, like, find myself enjoying more, like, indie-focused movies because there's not so much studio input, which is usually the source of a lot of things that, you know, go wrong with movies. Now, I'm never gonna get hired by a studio. I also, like, for enjoyment, I tend to also watch things that just let me turn my brain off completely. Like, my fiance and I just finished watching Love Island Australia, which is just fantastic and really, really bad. It's just hot people in bathing suits hanging out in a villa and making out. And then once in a while, a new hot person walks in, so they're all like, or no. And then every three or four episodes, the host, Sophie Monk, walks in and she's like, hello. And all the contestants are like, or no. Do you record the screenwriter guy or producer guy's lines first? Do you have someone reading the opposing lines when recording one or the other? Or just react and respond based on knowing the other character's lines? I, I usually start with screenwriter guy for no particular reason. I guess like it's the long, it's all, he always has the most lines. So I like to get it out of the way. And no, I'm just alone in the room. That's why there's like, if people have asked me for bloopers before, it's just me in a room talking to nothing. So if I flub a line, I just restart the line and I don't like break out into laughter. There's no fun blooper reel, unfortunately. It's just me going actually super easy, barely a into Actually, super easy. Barely, you know, just redoing it. The beard confuses me. Is it real? Do you take it off when shooting? Or do you just CGI edit it post-production? The beard is real, the mustache is not, and funny enough, the teeth are also not. Thanks for the great questions, and I'll see you next time. Thank you also for watching, and also goodbye.